Hello everybody, this is your boy Phil, and this is Time Served. And I'm about to show you another classic from the 1200D in DeKalb County. This TPO has everything you would want in a TPO. Ironings to the head, sex for rent, fat boys, crazy women, and judge losing his patience. So sit back and relax and enjoy this TPO brought to you by your folks at Time Served. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Let's roll. So for some reason, the beginning of this TPO didn't really explain the relationship. So I'll break it down for you very quickly top right is filing a TPO against the bottom two they have a living arrangement where all three of them live together and I don't know if there was another person in the mix but judge needs to sort out this mess it was me and mr. Rainey and then Chandler came on board the 20th of May and then Dexter on the 1st of June. Okay, so it was the four on the 1st of June, for example, it was all four of you in the four bedrooms. Yes, sir. Got it. Okay. And so, um, so tell me about the confrontation that came from that. Okay. Um, Ms. Dexter was supposed to move in on the 30th. She could not. Um, she was a no show, no call, and I took off from work for that. The first, she came um, late in the day and dropped in her furniture and clothing and then just disappeared. Uh, um, and I said, um, I was carrying my work laptop bag and some other items and very exhausted after being on my feet all day. I said, give me two minutes. I'm gonna run up to my room. I'm sure it's up there somewhere. And my intentions were to come right back down. Um, and she just started ranting and that's my exhibit one is a voice recording. Um, she started ranting for about seven minutes straight about, can I use profanity? That old B, that old B, that old B, um, I'm gonna beat her A if she don't hurry up and uh, give me the key. I'm nice, but I ain't that nice, I'm a gangster. And she has the sweetest little childlike animated voice. At first I thought, Oh, she's just letting out some steam to a family member, and I know moving is stressful, but then it got worse. And then she got on the phone with Rainey saying she was going to put her hands on me. And I just thought, I'm not going back down there. You know, I don't know this person, you know, from Adam, she might really hurt. So I stayed in my now, room. Let me, let me jump in real quick because I have a quick a question I need to clarify. What is your relationship to this property? I am um, a tenant. Um, okay, how long have you been living there? This time I've been living here since March. But oh. are you come back? I miss you cooking, blah, blah, blah. Um, you love it here. And so I took him up on it once again, reduced rent. I had two bedrooms, um, just like before, and a private bath because I'm an old person afraid of COVID. And then he, he decided he was going to interview Miss Dexter. Well, turns out Miss Dexter and Mr. Chandler had been friends or associates, and they brought her in as um, um I can't even sugarcoat it, sex in, ex in exchange for rent to service both of them. She's um, oh, so when she approached me on the second, it made me realize that she has been appointed now the head of the household while Steve Rainey is away because they had this secret arrangement. So what are you basing this on? Um, I'm basing this on the fact that I, I actually witnessed, overheard some of the conversations and some of the sexual acts. Between within who? The first couple of weeks between uh, Miss Dexter and... Um, at least Rainey and Rainey told me that, yeah, she was a security guard at um, Mr. Chandler's 
employer, and he works for one of the DeKalb County agencies. I don't have a clue which one, but she was at one point a part-time security guard, and that's how they knew each other. So he referred her. Okay, so so the she's evening when I did, she's moving in. Mm -hmm. So the the twentieth, I'm sorry, the second of June, when her first official day in the house, she ranted for seven minutes talking about what she was going to do to my old B A, and um, I stayed in my room because I then I then became very afraid. And then I heard her on the phone with Steve Rainey, and he was trying to calm her down. And there's also a text message that I sent over in one of the uh, pieces of evidence of Rainey had texted me saying, please answer the phone. I'm trying to stop that girl from beating your ass. And uh, I had blocked him a couple of days before because he was bothering me too much about, don't worry about going to work, stay there and give that girl that key. It was very, very important for her of an alcoholic beverage. I'm guessing it was a margarita, a daiquiri, something like that. It was red. And she threw it at me, hit me upside the head. It saturated my wig. And yeah, when uh, you say a container, you mean in like uh, a glass. It was okay. Got it. Carry on. And that covered um, the white linen shirt that I was wearing that day. And I had it for evidence, but um, we'll get to that later. Um, so I, I, I thought, wow. Um, and then she told me, she said, uh, I'm going to beat your old ass every day until you leave. That's exactly what she told me. And I'm like, oh, my God, did this really just happen? I called the police. And then uh, the next morning, Steve Rainey arrived home like he always does. He leaves on Monday morning, typically, and he comes back Saturday morning. And um, he came in and I had came, I'd snuck down to breakfast before she got up to get just a coffee and toast. And he um, came into the kitchen and said, and that's exhibit number two. It's about a, I want, I'm trying to go on memory. It's about a 30 minute conversation, but he starts off yonder saying, so what are you going to do? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, you're going to move, you're going to stay, you're going to go, what what you going to do? And I'm like, um, I wasn't planning on going anywhere, but if, if you want me to go, since, you know, thinking to myself, since Miss Dexter said, I'm going to beat your A until you go, then um, I'll start looking for a place. He says, well, how long are you going to need? I'm, I'm like, well, at least 30 days. I mean, that's standard and it takes a while to find a safe, clean place. And he starts a uh, rant. He says that it, it turns, he goes on and on, again, it's a long conversation. He starts accusing me of not paying rent, which is a lie. He demands rent in cash most of the time because he doesn't want to report it to the IRS's earnings. And then he says, um, I, get, I, I propose 30 days. He said, no, 30 days. He said, 15 days. And I so said, when okay. this was like the day after she threw the drink on you? Yes, sir. It's like my friend of almost two years just changed on me overnight. That's when I knew that it was something up with these relationships. So that was June 3rd, about June six weeks ago. Yes, sir. June the right. 3rd. And what's happened between these two people and you since okay. then? Since then, uh, Miss Dexter on, um, I'm going off a of memory, just random memory now the next major thing was she assisted steve rainey while i was at work no on the ninth i came in from work um and i parked in the garage next to steve rainey's car my assigned parking spot she and steve rainey was sitting at the breakfast table with three guns displayed and my, my heart just dropped in the middle of my stomach because i'm thinking oh my god and I couldn't even think to run or say nothing. I just kept walking past them and went upstairs to my room and locked the door. But they had a nine millimeter, an assault, like a, a assault rifle, rifle, I don't know what you call them. And then something like a sawed off shotgun or miniature machine gun. And I went in the room and um, just stayed. 
the next uh, couple of days, on the 13th, I came in from work and um, Mr. Chandler was sitting in his truck uh, in the driveway and uh, initially would not let me even pull in the driveway. And so I took my horn and after about two minutes, he pulls up so that I can drive in and get into my garage, no, uh, to get into the garage space. But to my surprise, my um, garage door opener wasn't opening because they had changed the locks and disconnected the power to the um, garage door opener. So Chandler then pulled his car, his truck right in front of me and just stared at me, mocking me as I struggled to try to get in, figure out a way to get in the house. Then finally he drove off. I asked him, could you please just let me in? He drove off. Then Steve Rainey texts me and said, there's a key in the mailbox with everything you need on it. He and Yvonne Dexter had packed up all my things and moved them to a storage unit. And I sent that over as well as evidence or an exhibit, a storage unit in Morrow close to my new job. Um, all right, hang on, because you said something about an exhibit. Let me see, Miss Broom, are you able to screen share or whatever? Uh, I see some exhibits, but they're not what she's Different saying. ones. Yeah. And I guess one of the challenges here is we got like four cases that they might be under. So um, it's going to be um, with the the exhibit one is a voice recording. Yes, ma'am. It would have came from, um, you know, a lot of my clothing and shoes were not there. Four different physical assignments. PO that she served against me for filing one on her and having her removed from the house. Um, so she called them and they came and they explained that, well, it's nothing they can do. And, uh, they just have to, you know, sit there and um, make sure I don't run away until the sheriff comes. Well, the sheriff didn't come because um, I honestly believe they know that it's a bogus um, TPO. That's not up to them. That has no control over how they act. I can tell you that right now. Oh, okay. So, because they if, if there's an order from the court, it's their job to enforce it. No ifs, ands, or buts. So, whatever happened, happened. But I can promise you, it wasn't for that. They may have been. So, they may have been extremely busy. Uh, or I know that the law enforcement is short staffed nationwide. So, for whatever reason, they did not come. She got upset. And uh, I was uh, the, the while the law enforcement was there, I was making my coffee as I normally do. And um, when they left, she came in and start brushing up against me at the stove, uh, cooking my eggs. And I reminded her that, you know, you can't just take people's groceries. And she started pushing and shoving then. And she took my um, my coffee that I had just fixed, threw the coffee on me and took my coffee mug, smashed it in the floor. And then um, as I went um, uh, over to get my phone to call the police, she just started grabbing phones bam, in the floor, bam, busted up both of my phones. The one with what I would use uh, to uh, do all the voice recordings on. Um, and then my uh, primary phone for conversations and work and what have you. She destroyed both of them. And they are uh, pictures of those are in exhibit um, number, is this number two? That were sent over yesterday as well. All right, give us a moment to see if we can pull that up. Along with that, um, and I know that, you know, these things don't, um, other cases don't have anything to do with this case, but other cases tell about character. On no, uh, not doing that. Okay. It's it, that kind of character evidence. We're not going to. I have to decide what happened between y'all. And, and I don't believe yes, whatever yes. other interpersonal issues exist between either of these people and anyone else. Um, it's just not instructive in unpacking this in my opinion um and so um all right so madam clerk do we have the exhibit she's referencing this time 
Now, this one is a picture of a car. Exhibit two, would that be a picture of a car, like the inside of a car? No, ma'am. This is going to be um, exhibit two. It was sent over on Monday, yesterday at 12.42 p.m. by um, Asher. And what is it a picture of? Wait a minute. Um, cell phone. Two cell phones side by side on a brown tabletop and then some pages of um, a legal document, which um, the judges said I can't present that second piece. Well, but it's photos of my two phones smashed. I'll look for a judge. She said it was sent over by the women resource out here. Yeah. Um, and it, yes, it's a lot. It's a lot of um, pieces of evidence. I tried to be very thorough. Judge, I have a camera with one with a cell phone. All right. We uh, we'll keep moving. We'll circle back on exhibits if we need to and we can check I can in with send her my email. I can send her my email in the chat if she wants to send it to me directly. So I can do that. All right. So let's do this for now. Uh, Ms. Pates, are there any other incidents that we have not discussed that involve Ms. Dexter or Mr. Chandler? Oh, yes. With um, I'm trying to stay focused on one at a time. Um, Mr. Chandler, um, again, um, he, he tried to flirt with me the week that he moved in and I very graciously declined the offer. And it was like, um, I don't know, awkward 
uh, with him in the house moving forward. But he initially became violent with me um, on the 23rd um, of June when the sheriff called me to coordinate the service of the TPO on Miss Dexter to have her removed from the house. I came into the garage and um, he rushed, he was standing in the uh, kitchen window that's open to the garage. He rushed to the door and um, just stood there with a, a crazy stare. Then he went back to the window. I was afraid to get out of the car because I'm thinking, dang, she left and the sheriff has left. So they are and they'll tell him when they'll be back to serve her and he can do what he's can do whatever he wants to me. So I sat in my car for a minute and at that time, he just stood in the window blowing kisses at me, mocking me. And then when I came in the house, he spoke very loudly in his beautiful accent. The, How was your day, Gail? How was your day? How's your new job, Gail? How's your new job? And I just kept walking and went on up to my, my bedroom and stayed the remainder of the evening. And Miss um, Dexter returned again that returned that night around 1030 or 11. So I, I um contact the sheriff and let them know that she was there. Um, they didn't come until the morning of the 24th where she was officially served and escorted out. Um, she, she was driving a car that she had just purchased without a license and um, she was afraid to put her stuff in there. So she called Mr. Chandler and he came to help her out. Um, and he loaded her stuff into his uh, Dodge Ram pickup truck and took her wherever she needed to go. However, um, he came back to the house around one o'clock and he was in the kitchen downstairs, just slamming the kitchen cabinets like he was having a, a meltdown and cursing and saying all the things he was going to do to me. I'm an old B. He was going to uh, beat my old ass. She didn't deserve that. And uh, this, that, the other, and the third. All right, I stayed in the room, but then it got so um, bad. I thought, hmm, he just might act on his um, on his threats. So, and he had done this. He had, I'm having flashbacks. He had done this a couple of times before, too. Um, when she would jump on me and I'd call the police, he would um, run up and uh, try to force his way in my door um, and get me off the phone calling the police. And um, each time the police uh, would start to come, he'd leave. But on this particular day, the 24th, he stayed and ranted and ran it. And they came and they talked to him. And after they left, then he and Steve Rainey went into Miss Dexter's room after the sheriff had told us, you know, don't go in there because she left her stuff a certain way. She dad should have the right to come back and find it the way she left it. And I understood that they went in there fumbling around, rumbling like they were looking for something. And then they went into the garage um, and I heard them fumbling around even more. But I just stayed in my room. Um, so the next morning when I did finally go down to the garage after listening to live streaming service, I was going to Walmart to get groceries until the trails walk and clear my head. I know that's when I noticed the puddle of water and those are exhibit pictures. Let's see if I can find those. I noticed a strange puddle of water at the rear of my car. And the first thought is, dang, they were out there in the garage on the 23rd um, after I called the uh, police. And then they were out there in the garage on the morning of the 24th. Oh, the morning of the 24th, um, no, the 25th, that Sunday, before discovering the puddle of water, um, Mr. Chandler was having another meltdown. I had gone down to fix coffee and he had a pot of old chicken grease sitting on the stove. Um, and I was afraid that my elbow was going to knock it over while I was fixing coffee in my little Keurig. So I just moved the grease from one eye to the other. When I came back up to the room, enjoying my coffee 
He was in a cursing fit and slamming cabinet doors again. Stop effing with my shit. I'm going to kill this. Bitch. Then he got, he, after ranting like that for several minutes, he got on the phone with Steve Rainey, uh, telling him the same thing. I'm going to do this, that, and I'm going to kill this old B messing with my stuff. And, 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 and so I thought, hmm, he was stomping around. He's coming up here again. And, you know, so I called the police. And I was recording him. So I played the recording for the police. And um, they um, counseled him on, you know, you know, why did he make a false report and explain to him that, hey, she was recording you and what you're saying ain't adding up. So that made what was, him. What falsity did he report? He said that I was that I had messed with his food and his groceries that he had on the stove and they could see that it was just a pot of um, chicken grease where he had fried chicken or pork chops the day before and left it on the stove top. Oh. And I admitted to them, sir, that I, I, I slid it from the one eye over because my elbow, the counter space was so small. I didn't want to mop up grease and I admitted that to them. But he tried to make it sound like I just came down there and I don't know, destroyed his his whole um, his whole meal or something. With while acknowledging the possibility that some of the things that he might be saying, if corroborated, and I know there are questions about recordings and whatnot, this is a meandering path to whatever we're supposed to be getting toward today. What is the significance of the water in the garage? Okay. So after the police came and heard that, I went out to my car just to get out of the house because I hadn't been out in two days. And that's when I noticed the water at the, a puddle of water at the back of my car. And I thought, oh my God, I hope they didn't put water in my gas tank. So I made it two miles from the house to Anvil Block Road into Walmart. When I came out of Walmart, my car, which was running like a brand new sewing machine, um, was fidgety to start. And then when it did start, it was sputtering a little bit. So I thought, hmm, they probably did put water in it. And I went a, a half mile up to Kroger to try to top it off with some premium gas, thinking maybe that'll at least let me go four or five miles and find an emergency mechanic. And I didn't make it that far. The car shut off within another mile. And... Um, I had it towed. I flagged down the tow truck. It was just the grace of God. He was like right there um, where I pulled off at the side of the road and I flagged him down. He towed me back to the house um, for an $80 discount and put the car right back in the garage where it always was. And then I called my mechanic from Mableton, Georgia, um, to come and check it and uh, repair it because I was just thinking, OK, it's just water. And when the mechanic came, um, he pumped out the fuel and um, the fuel tank. And those photos are sent in there in exhibits to each of the cases for uh, both Chandler and Rainey. Um, he shined his light up in there to show me these big clumps of sugar and another white substance in the bottom of the fuel tank and um, he sponged all of that out and um, replaced the fuel pump and then uh, he verified that it was sugar in the photographs you can see the crystallized sugar all inside the actual oh. fuel pump we and then that, judge would you like for me to show that yes if we if we have that one okay and then when he added the new fuel in after installing a brand new fuel pump and dry cleaning the actual fuel tank um he did warn that the um other there still could be sugar in the lines because you drove a couple of miles so don't be surprised if i have to come back and do the fuel injectors so how and do you know that he was the one that was responsible for this? Because that Friday evening when I came into the kitchen, um, I had my um, 
after he was upset with me because Yvonne Dexter was about to be removed. The sheriff had just came and left and she had left. He had a brand new tube of caulking right beside him. And that's the other piece of the, of the car story. And that video is no longer available because that video was on the phone that Miss Dexter destroyed this past Saturday with a whole lot of other videos and voice recordings. Um, however, he had that caulking. He had a brand new tube of caulking just sitting beside him when he was mocking me. And then the time that I witnessed him and Rainey in the garage, both on the 24th and the morning of the 25th, both times right after I had to call law enforcement. Um, to get them to stop, get him to stop, Chandler to stop ranting about all the harm he was going to do to me, kill me, make me come up missing and all this, that and the other. And in addition to the to the sugar in the tank, and it, it like it had to be five pounds or more, it was so much. And um, when the when the mechanic put like four gallons of premium back in there and we started it up, we immediately smelled, well, it took him forever to get it in because they took that caulking, the little tubes like what you use to do fine caulking around a shower or tub. They took all right. that. All of, this, all of this can be boiled down to your car was damaged. We, we have been going for so long and we haven't even gotten to the part where the first person asks you their first question, much less the part where they get to give their own testimony about these stories. So you... The, the painstaking detail with which you are spelling these things out is not really helpful in this setting in terms of determining what what the rulings that I'm tasked with making. If we were in a civil suit where we were trying to figure out the exact dollar amount of the damages, some of these things would, would bear a little differently. So right now, I'm going to shift us in a different direction. What we're going to do, uh, Mr. Chandler, your case is first on the calendar. Uh, and what we've been talking about most recently has pertained to you understanding you're going to have a chance to give your own testimony. Um, you've had a chance to see those pictures that were shared. Do you have any questions you wish to ask uh, Ms. Pates or any objections to the admissibility of those pictures for whatever weight the court gives them when we're done? I think you'll have to click to unmute. Yes, sir. All right. Um, so do you have any questions for this witness? Any objections to the admission of those pictures into evidence? Yes, sir. All right. What questions would you like to ask Ms. Pates? Did Ms. Stitt ever saw me on her car? No, she said I she saw, saw you with the other items. No. The car can is for, I, I regrow the bathroom. My bathroom downstairs, I regrow my bathroom. So I cart around the tub. That's what the car can was for. Okay, that's a statement, the, not a question. Do you have a question for this witness? Did she see me around her car? I, I don't know nothing about her car. All right, have you seen him near the car? Yes, sir. Both times when I heard him, when I heard the noise in the garage, because nobody would ever spend any time in the garage, um, I would come. I came downstairs, and the kitchen window overlooks the garage, looks right out into it. That's when I saw both he and um, Steve Rainey in the garage. But they were just standing between the cars, my Mercedes and Rainey's Jaguar. Um, like they were having a conversation when they saw me in the window. Okay, so she's given that example of an instance where you okay. were near the vehicle. Do you okay. have other questions? Okay, you heard what she just said, my honor. She saw me and Rainey in the facility of her car. So she did not see me, nor she did not see Mr. Rainey tampering with her car because it never happened. That's argument, not a question. Do you have other questions for this witness? No. Okay. Uh, it, it is a fine tightrope to walk between hoping that things are going the place you need them to go, and sometimes you have to just take the wheel and get them there. Uh, and th we have crossed over into the latter situation because I have a number of other hearings that we are going to conduct this afternoon. 
And there are going to be a whole lot of people ordering DoorDash for dinner is where we're at right now. So, all right, Miss Dexter, this is the time for questions and only questions. The time for testimony. Time for testimony. I'm Echo. I'm Echo. Do you have questions yeah. for Miss Pence? I just want to ask one question. If I um, did anything physically to her, why was I not arrested? She said that I physically hit her in the head. She said oh, she called let me, police. Let me ask. Okay. So did you have any visible injuries from those incidents, Ms. Pates? No, sir. And that's that except for this Saturday. This Saturday was the first time that I had a visible incident where she punched me, and she's done that several times, just punched me and snatched my wig off. She's made a um eyes. She's made a, a hobby out of just running into my room and snatched my wig off. It's funny to her and All punched right, so me the in the face. The police did not so observe any injuries me. and didn't make an arrest. Is they that did. the, the, the question? Police. Is that the correct answer to the question, Ms. Pates? That is correct. They took, they took pictures, but they did not make an arrest. Then, okay, they so took they, me to the, then they took me to the T-Mobile store to get a backup phone because she had smashed both of my phones just prior to okay. punching me, please. And did they give, give you any information regarding the next steps you were supposed to take? Yes, sir. They advised me to go and um, pursue a warrant, which I had applied for a criminal warrant shortly after June the 2nd sec the second with the first uh, physical assault. I applied online through the DeKalb County courts. They, and I was told that since I didn't have, a, they kept, they called me at work and said, do you have a social security number? I'm like, who that's being a, uh, accused of a crime is gonna give you their social security number to have them prosecuted? Yeah, that civilian warrant process is complicated to navigate. That doesn't, that's not surprising to me as someone who handles some of those issues uh -huh. uh, that you ran into that roadblock. It's a process that doesn't exist in most other states, but. All right. Uh, and then, sir, and then, sir, on Mr. Chandler, I've been working with the DeKalb County Sheriff's Unit on domestic violence to pursue um, a warrant um, for the um, uh, physical assault of him uh, trying to bust the force his way into my room, amongst other things. And they've just been, I don't know, um, the first investigator was on vacation and um, someone called me and assured me. Do you have any other questions for Ms. Pates? I do not, sir. All uh -uh. right. Very good. So, Mr. Stevens, uh, Mr. Chandler, excuse me, uh, yes, you're, uh, you were on first as our, uh, as our yes, first listed respondent. We'll give you the opportunity to testify if you wish to testify. You've already been sworn in and are under oath. Would you like to testify yes. in this matter? Yes, sir. What would you like to tell us? She's crazy. Come on. When I moved into that place, into that house, me and Miss Gill, we used to get along. Miss Gill started saying that I bring in women in and out of the house. I don't have no little kids that I have to take care of. I come, I work, I come home, I bed, by eight o'clock I gone. I hardly sleep there. I come back about six o'clock, get ready for work and come to work. I try to ask Gail what was the problem with me and her. I said, Gail, let's talk about this. What's the problem? I never did you anything. Oh, I don't want to talk to fat boys. No, fat boy. That was it. I leave it as that. She called the police. Tell the police I threatened her. I never had no conflict with the woman. So I was trying to figure out what's going on between me and her. She never tell me what's going on between me and her. I witnessed she, I was sleeping one night and I heard a commotion upstairs. I got up and I went up there. Yes, I did went up there. I don't know what was going on up there. I said, I said, Ava, open this door, open this door. Ava opened the door. I saw Gail took up an iron, an iron that you iron clothes and throw it at Eva and it barely missed her head. I called the police. Then she said, she said one day, she said, 
how she can burn the house down. We got to sleep with one eye open. And I didn't know where all of that was coming from because me and that woman never had no conflict. And she caught me totally off guard. I don't know what happened. And with her car, I don't know nothing about her car. I really don't. That's all I have to say. Okay, and you describe an incident where she made another threat to you or she had a weapon. Was that around the same time? Yes. She, she had a... Um, it was like it was a, a, like, a, like a butter knife. I think it was a butter knife, and she said that she was going to stab me with it. And so I looked at her and I said, "You better get away from me, woman. You better get away from me." That's what I told her. And then I called my girlfriend and I said, "Yo, this bitch over here is acting crazy." And my girlfriend said to me, "Just put on your clothes and come on over here." And that's what I did. All right, uh, Ms. Pates, do you have any questions that you think need to be asked to Mr. Chandler right now? You'll have to click to unmute for me. Yes, Mr. Chandler, um, what were you doing in the garage for about an hour on the morning of the 24th? Fourth, after Miss Dexter was removed from the house, and again on Sunday morning after the police left um, with uh, Mr. Rainey, I was not in that garage when the police removed Miss Dexter. Miss Dexter called me to get her from there, and the sheriff department was still there. And the sheriff department said to me, "Thank you very much, sir." And I put her inside my car, inside my truck, and we left. So and Sunday, is, what were you doing for that time in the garage? Now the sun, now the Sunday, when when me and Mister Rennie was in the garage, Miss something, some the the computer on Mister Rennie's car is not good. So, and his car won't start. He was. So is the answer to this question you were doing something for Mister Rennie's car? No, me and Mr. Rainey was inside the garage looking at his car. So he was using some of my tools because so his car have a yes. Yes, it was me you and Mr. Rainey. On in Mr. The Rainey's car. Her question is what yeah, were you was, doing in the garage? And your answer is working on Mr. Rainey's car. What's yes, your next question, Mr. Mr. Pates? My next question is um on one occasion, um, Mr. Chandler, you you shared, you were, I don't know, just transparent for no reason and shared with me that you um, were um, illiterate, um, lacking the ability to read and write well, and you were really grateful for your government job. Um, and then I look at your, um, the TPO that you filed, and it's a mirror of the original TPO that Miss Dexter tried to file on the 27th after she was removed from the home. It's in handwriting. Is that your writing, sir? Listen to me. My words to you was, I'm the only illiterate man that have a government job. That is what I said. To Answer you. the question. This is, this is so ridiculous. Whose handwriting is on the paper? I don't know. How did I it don't get done? Know. I did that paperwork. I did that PTO. I did that. So this is your handwriting. That yes. I'm looking at on your petition. On, on my PTO is my handwriting. I don't know nothing about Miss Dexter's uh, PTO or nothing. All, All right. right. Madam, can you pull that up and screen share it for me? The petition for 5964. One 
me know if you need some assistance, Ms. Plum. What page would you like, Judge? Thank you, Ms. George. First, first one will be fine. Okay. Now, Mr. Mr. Pates, I, I mean no disrespect with this question, but I do want to make sure I understand what's going on. Sometimes people make comments that they don't mean or as a joke. Other other times, you know, they say things. So this is the petition we have. So before we get into what she's asking, I guess the question is, is this your handwriting? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you filled this petition out and then you did what with it? I, I, um, I think I emailed it uh email it back to the sh um down to the website that they told me to yes that's my yes so did you send it to the so you wrote it by hand scanned it and emailed it yes yes sir okay, i wrote it I, I, I wrote it out by hand and then i give it to my girlfriend she took it to her job and she scanned it and sent it back so that you would have the electronic copy to, to email yes, in. Yes, yes. Okay. And so, all right, Ms. Pates, what's your next question? Um, your Honor, is it possible to um, get a just a quick uh, sample writing from uh, no. Mr. Pates? What's next? Okay. Um, oh, I'd like to point out that Mr. Chandler, this, uh, TPO initial filing, which is stamped across the top of most of the pages, but definitely pages 8, um, 13, and 14 is, as I stated earlier, filed on 627, 2023 at 10 a.m. And then your your actual TPO wasn't filed until the 5th of uh, July um, after you had been uh, removed from the home. So what my my direct question is, why is there um, a lapse of almost 30 days from the filing? Sorry, what where what almost 30 days are you referencing here? Well, the um, TPO has a, a date stamp across the top of it. If you see page eight. It's got two numbers on it, page 8 and 12 on page 8, uh, page 13 and 14, or page 8, 1 and 2. Are you looking at an order or a petition? Um, I'm looking at the petition, sir. The file okay, and it's the same handwritten one that was just screen shared? Yes, sir, and it was initially filed on 6-27-23, which was the red flag that made me believe that it was the uh, petition that was um, uh, initially filed by Ms. Dexter and wasn't processed. And then Mr. Then the actual date that Mr. Chandler filed isn't until July the 5th after he was right. His file date is the 5th of July for this. Where, where are you basing that on? It's printed on the copy of the documents that I have. 23PO05964. I'm just going to tell you, I think that's the date that they were printed, that they were literally printed. It's not the date that, that, they, that anything was done. That's the date it was printed off the computer to bring to you. Yes, it did. Okay. You were served. I was served on the 5th. Yes, sir. So th that would match up if somebody, the sheriff, if they printed those documents on the 5th, they could have brought them to you on the 5th. That's why they're dated the 5th. What's your next question? Okay. Um, that's really all I have for Mr. Jim. All right. Uh, Ms. Dexter, do you have any questions for Mr. Chandler? 
I just want to ask him, did I previously know you before June 1st? I've never met him ever in my life. So no, ma'am. Well, I'm, I'm asking him. I'm sorry. No, ma'am. Did I? I, I didn't know you. No, ma'am. Thank you. That's all I have, Judge. When I, when I, when I, my honor, when I met her, that is when I found out that she works for the county too. Since then, I never know her before then. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Chandler, I think that's all the questions we have for you. Ms. Dexter, this is your opportunity to provide your testimony. You've been sworn in and are under oath. What would you like to tell us today? Well, my testimony is I feel that this lady, Ms. Pates, is mentally disturbed. Um, she is delusional. She she just do all types of stuff in the house. Like like Steve told you, she threw an iron at my head one time when I wasn't looking. We did get into a confrontation because she's mad that I shared the bathroom with her. But it's not her house. You know, she got an eviction. She's mad that she got an eviction and the guy wants her to get out the house because she's not paying rent and she's squatting. And he he brought other people in to 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 pay the rent and she's not paying the rent. So she's mad that, you know, I guess her and Mr. Rainey had some type of relationship. I don't know, but he's the 60 year old man. I've never had any type of sexual dealings with him. No type of it's, it is nothing like that. I did find the ad on Craigslist. I responded to the ad. I moved in on June 1st. She's correct. She was supposed to leave a key under the mat because she had to go to work. She did not leave the key. So I called Mr. Rainey. Mr. Chandler came out of work and came to let me inside of the residence. When she got home, um, she, I asked, she told me that she's going to give me the key. I told her that's fine. Mr. Rainey gave, uh, Mr. Chandler gave me a key. I'm going to make my, I'm going to go and make my own key. So at that point in time, she was upset. She got mad and said, somebody trying to, whatever that, that made us estranged that, that day that made us not, I mean, I guess she got an attitude about that. I don't know why she got this big thing that something's going on between Nothing ever has been going on. But, okay, so move forward. <clears throat> She's just been doing erratic things in the house. She'll turn on all of the lights and leave the lights on all day. She'll um turn on all the water. So Mr. Rainey just wanted her out of the house. You know, so I, like I said, I don't be here like that. I I just go and mind my business. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm just a regular tenant. But as far as her and her erratic behavior, it, I fear for my life because she does stuff at night where it's, it's scary. You know, she told everybody she was going to burn the house down. Like he, like Mr. Rain, uh, Mr. Chandler said, and to sleep with one eye open. Um, she just do, she, she put the glue all over the locks. So we only have one door to enter. Uh, we can't, we can't get in and out of the house. It's only one door and that's the door to the garage. And the only reason she didn't glue that door is because she has the only garage key. And Mr. Rainey, which is the homeowner, has the, um, the garage the garage key. So he then gave me the garage key so I can get in and out of the home. She did put a PTO on me, but they dismissed it because it was first I left when when they served me, they told me I had to leave the home. I left. The PTO was up July 9th, but I didn't come back. I didn't come back until we went to court. When we went to court, they dismissed the charges and then that's when I returned back to the home. But and that like was a procedural dismissal you didn't have an evidentiary hearing with testimony correct correct and i've never even talked to the judge before they even issued the pto that's why i'm like i don't know well, why that's how that process works that's how it works for oh. everybody it's the same reason that you talk to a judge right. to get yourself here without them there so all right, right. so you were what else did you wish to tell us i just wish to tell you that i fear for my life she does she does 
crazy things at nighttime and i i be scared to sleep sometimes but this is where i live and she, i pay rent here i pay three months rent she don't she she doesn't pay any rent she doesn't she, she doesn't live here she put a pto on mr rainy which is the person that um actually um owned the property she put a pto on him because he gave her eviction papers at first he just told her you know go ahead and leave he didn't really you know he told her to get some time for her to go just go ahead and leave but she wouldn't leave so now he actually filed for eviction to get her out of here and now that she's know that she's leaving she just she just do stuff she just do crazy things she wait till people go to sleep and she does crazy things and like I said, I paid to live here and then I had to pay for a hotel for two to three weeks uh, because of this incident. And this this and she's I think she needs to be mentally evaluated. Those all everything she said was lies. I've never touched this lady. I think she broke her own phones. I've, I've, I've never put my hands on this 60 year old lady. I've never put my hands on her. I never punched her in the face. I never told her I'm a beater. I, we got into a verbal argument, of course, but I've never put my hands on her. So I just, I just, like I said, I think that the PTO, um, TPO is valid because she's the, she's the actual aggressor. She talks very nice and sweet, but she's really a demon. She, <laughs> she really does stuff that is outrageous. And I just want the court to recognize that. I, I don't know what evidence she has, but it's false evidence. I've never put my hands on her. She the one actually um, hurt me. She threw an iron at my head. She she gets crazy and erratic and she just she just go crazy. I, I don't know what's wrong with her, but I've never put my hands on her. And that that's my testimony. I'm ready to go. Sorry. All right, Ms. Pates, do you have any questions for this witness? Um, yes, because I missed this one on Chandler, and I should have asked him as well. But um, Ms. Dexter, um, when you say that, when you make the accusation that I um, said I was going to burn down the house with everyone in it, um, I noticed that that's only on uh, Mr. Chandler's um application for TPO. Do you have any uh, proof or any police report that I made such threats? No, I didn't Specifically that I was going to burn down the house while I everyone was in it. Police reports are not evidence for these I purposes. Heard the evidence is it. testimony. I've never called the police. We just heard you say it out of your mouth. We were, what are you, you no, I don't have All any right. evidence. I've, that's, okay, a, you that's enough to... of an answer, Ms. Dexter. Ms. Pates, right. do you have any other questions? Um, I do, I do, I do. Um, Easy. On your um, TPO, uh, Ms. Dexter, um, that you filed, what dates um, did the uh, allegations actually take place? Because I'm, I'm noticing that again, that your um, TPO was not filed until three or four days after you had been removed um, under the TPO I filed you. I filed on you. One month. It's been June. It was in June. All right. We're going we're gonna to reframe this question. Did you file okay. your TPO after the sheriff removed you from the house? I did. Okay. Uh, that's... Uh, I don't know how many questions it was going to take to get to that, but I think that's okay. where that's going. Ms. Pates, what is your next question? Um, just the allegations on that TPO. I mean, typically, if, if something happened to me, I'd say it happened on the June the 2nd, June the 9th, and June the 13th. Are there any specific dates? Why aren't there dates on the allegations? Where, this isn't okay. I'm, are you here. right? I'm in the weeds. Yes. I'm sorry, sir. I'm in the weeds. What's your next question? Um, here's a key one. Um, you stated several times, uh, Ms. Dexter, that Mr. Stephen Rainey owns the property here at 3927. Um, 
how do you know that he owns it? Because I know differently. Irrelevant. Next question. That's all I have, sir. Okay. Mr. Chandler, do you have any questions for Ms. Dexter? No, sir. All right. I don't want to be rash and make any decisions while I sit here. I have a lot to think over and look over. The three of you will be placed in the waiting room uh, and be brought back in when and if I have an announcement about how we'll be proceeding from here. Sir, can I ask one more question? Did Miss Pate throw an iron at the back of my head? I want to ask her uh, that one. She's not on the witness stand for that. So, no, ma'am. Uh, all parties will be placed in the waiting room. I put that in my PTO. I did put that in there. That she threw an iron. That's why I'm afraid of, of for my life. I put that in the P I put that in the TPO that she threw an and, iron at me. And you offered testimony to that effect. And she took the stand when she testified and was subject to questioning. The parties are going to be placed in the waiting room. Just and give we me will five minutes. Through. I want to go to the restroom. We will go at least we will give you at least five minutes. I can promise you that. So take all the time you need. I know we have been going for two hours here. So uh, absolutely. It'll be at least five and maybe more than that. And we will. So at this point, judge cut the live stream and had all parties involved go into the waiting room. I waited around all day, tried to see if they came back. And at this point, there was no ending to this. I apologize. We are at the mercy of the courts in this situation. But the way it was going, I could leave it up to you. How do you think Judge would have ruled? Let us know in the comments. This is time served. See you later, nerds. The more you know. Wah, 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 wah.